First down and goal to go. Mahomes looks to throw it. Pump faking right side. He wants it. A comeback cut. It is caught by Kelsey. Touchdown, Kansas City. That was how the Chiefs' epic victory over the Buffalo Bills in the divisional round of the postseason came to an end last year. That win punched the Chiefs' ticket to a fourth consecutive AFC championship game. Now, of course, the Chiefs are looking to get to more of these in the years to come. It's led to some retooling on the roster. Tyreek Hill was sent to the Miami Dolphins in exchange for a package of draft picks. The Chiefs now have 12 picks in this upcoming draft. It's the most of any team in the NFL. So what are the Chiefs going to do with all these draft picks? Well, for more on that, we're checking in today with Lance Zierlein from NFL com one of the very best out there and lance will start in the first round the chiefs have two first rounders this year doesn't happen very often for the chiefs number 29 and number 30 who are some names to keep an eye on uh, at the back end of the first round for the chiefs well, i think the first thing you, you have to see is whether or not uh, uh jameson williams from uh, alabama who has a torn acl whether or not he slides in the first round down to the Chiefs because I just think he has a talent, especially when you pair it with the arm talent and the arm strength of, of, of Patrick Mahomes, he would make some sense in Andy Reid's offense. So I think if he slides, you have to consider that. Now, will he be an instant help this year? He may not be an instant help. Will he come back and play this year? He says he's going to, um, and he very well may. I mean, the, the recovery from injuries is pretty astonishing right now for athletes, but I just, I don't think you can expect him to be at 100% this year. I think that's unrealistic based on when he had the torn ACL. So, pup list, you almost have to guarantee that will be the case for him. But in the long term, in these draft picks, Brett Beach is not going to draft a guy just for this year. It's going to be drafted for that entire, the entirety of the first contract, and potentially beyond. So I think uh, Jameson Williams from Alabama uh, would make a lot of sense. And then you have to see if anyone else starts to follow you. I'll tell you another guy with an injury that is intriguing because of, you know, the the needs for the, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs would be David Ajabo. Now, I don't see uh, the Chiefs taking David Ajabo late in the first round. They could take him with that pick late in the first round. The problem is with a torn Achilles, you know, that's almost assuredly is going to knock him out of this year. He's already a raw player to begin with, but his talent as a pass rusher is substantial. He's not a great run defender right now, very raw, but his upside from a pass rush standpoint is really, really high. And when you have as many picks as the Chiefs have over the first uh, 100, that gives you a little bit more opportunity to draft and stash players. You don't have the same uh, concerns about immediacy that other teams are going to have. So I do think a player like Ojabo and Jameson Williams could be two very high upside players, two guys who probably would have gone in the first 15 picks of this year's draft, who the Chiefs might be able to take a look at uh, with discounted prices. So I wanted to make sure I hit on both of those players, potentially, and, and, and listen, maybe Ojabo would be back into the first just so you get the extra year on him. Yeah, that's what the draft is all about, right? It's value. And if you can get guys who would have been taken maybe in the top 15 at the back end of the first round, that's some serious value for the big picture moving forward. So we'll see what happens in the first round. The beauty of this draft, though, is if you're looking at the areas the Chiefs may want to address, so wide receiver, edge, maybe corner, this is where this draft is really deep in those areas. So maybe you find guys that would be first round picks on day two. Uh, when you're looking at day two and day three, who are some names that stand out to you for the Chiefs? Well, I think Christian Watson, wide receiver for North Dakota State, he's a he's a tall wide out, really good athlete, explosive. Uh, the tape, I would say the tape doesn't look like it's second round, but then he got to the senior bowl, was playing really well, and then his traits are just really outstanding. And I think what you're seeing is a lot of upside. Now, he's a player who played at the uh, FCS level, but he played at the Alabama of the FCS, right? And North Dakota State is just really, really good. They've got a great program. They're really well coached. So. I think uh, Christian Watson is a guy at wide receiver that you could you could take a look at for sure. I think Roger McCreary is a cornerback from Auburn, very strong. You know, and the Chiefs don't have to have six foot one corners. They've shown a willingness uh, to to take some guys who are five eleven or you know they like a certain type of cornerback. He's a very physical press corner. He's a guy that will get in your face, um, be physical with you at the point of press as well as in run support. So I think he's a guy that would really fit Spags defensively. And I think he'll be there and available in the second round uh, at the cornerback position. I'll tell you another one who fits specifically what the Chiefs tend to like is Michael Clemens. And I'll tell you why. The Chiefs have been a team that, you know, 
when Chris Ballard was there, when Dorsey was there, Ryan Poles, Brett Veach, Andy, they all love traits. They want height, weight, length, speed, explosiveness. So Michael Clemens is a guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on from Texas A&M. Um, they have done a very good job at finding explosive players that they feel like have the traits to be coached up. Well, this is Michael Clemens. He is a physical player with some edge. He's got length. He tested really, really well. One of the only guys to test well at Texas A&M's Pro Day. He had a nice combine as well. So he's a guy with the, with the physical strength to play the run on the NFL level. And then he's got the tools and traits to potentially get better as a pass rusher. So he's a guy at the back end of the second that I think you should keep an eye on. Another guy is Dominic Robinson. I was a big fan of Dominic Robinson's take from Miami, Ohio. He's a former wide receiver, uh, played a couple years of wide receiver there, moved over to the defensive side of the ball. But you see the ex you see the explosive flashes. Everything I just told you about, looking for traits and explosiveness, that's Dominic Robinson. He is a guy who can get off the uh, edge very, very quickly. He's got bend. He's got explosive flatten and turn to the pocket. And he's a player who I also think is really fun to watch in run defense because he is, when the ball flows away from him, he's got chase speed uh, to, to go pursue and go get it. So what he does is I think he really helps your run defense in terms of the ability to really uh, tighten the field, narrow the field so that running games find that they're not able to outflank the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, for example, and he might be able to help with something like that. So that would be another uh, pass rusher to take a look at. Uh, from a, another wide receiver standpoint, you know, Jalen Tolbert, and I'm not sure Tolbert goes in the second. I think he's probably more of a third round guy. Jalen Tolbert is a very intriguing wide receiver out of South Alabama. He's had some drop issues at times, but from a ball winning standpoint, he can really go get the football. He is uh, he's got really good size. He's about six one and a half, about 200 pounds. He can leap up. He can get it. He's a thinker, sometimes a little too much where he tries to process too much and overthink things rather than just playing. But he's got a lot of talent as a pass catcher and a ball winner down the field. And, you know, that's interesting that Tyree Kill, such a small wide receiver, uh, was such a great ball winner in space and in the air. I mean, you rarely see that. And so when I'm, I'm giving you some wide receivers that I think – that the Chiefs need specifically for that ability to win the 50-50s because we know when Pat Mahomes is feeling it, he's not afraid to take chances and challenge defenders. But if you're going to challenge defenders, you have to have guys who can win those challenges in 50-50s. So um, I would say uh, Jalen Tolbert is another one of those guys. And then, you know, I, I would say based on the way that the Chiefs tend to um, stack their wide receiver group. You could see Jahan Dotson from Penn State. He's not necessarily a ball winning guy. I mean, he can. His ball skills are phenomenal, but he's not physically aggressive. He's not a very powerful fight through contact type of contested catch winner. What he is, is you throw it up and outside his frame and he can go get it. Some phenomenal hands. He's very, very fast vertically. So he's another guy. He's going to play some in the slot same way that Miko Hardman is going to play in the slot. But as we saw with, with Tyreek, if you get a guy who has some vertical speed, the ability to go win a football uh, when it's up outside the frame, and a guy who can be explosive after the catch, Andy Reid and the Chiefs are typically going to have some interest in you. So Jahan Dawson from Penn State, another guy that you, you certainly can't rule out. Yeah, so much talent in this draft. And we always talk about round one, and for good reason. All the hype is about round one. Uh, but really for the Chiefs, when you have so many picks on day two, day two is the day to watch uh, if you are a Chiefs fan. It's an opportunity for the Chiefs here if they can hit uh, in the second and third round uh, to really set this team up for success uh, for years and years to come. So the good news is lots of talent in round two, in round three and beyond. And we'll see what happens over the course of draft weekend. He's Lance Zierlein. Check out his work at NFL.com and on NFL Network. He'll be live throughout the draft on NFL Network. Give him a follow on Twitter, at Lance Zierlein. And it's funny, I mean, if you're looking up a prospect on NFL.com, you want to know what they're all about, this guy probably wrote the bio, so he definitely knows what he is talking about. Lance, awesome stuff as always, man. Really appreciate your time.